This lesson on fluid mechanics in medicine will cover Ohm's law and hemodynamics. The learning objective is to apply Ohm's law to understand the relationship between blood pressure, cardiac output, and vascular resistance. Some of you may already be somewhat familiar with Ohm's law from studying electricity and magnetism, while some of you may not. I'll review it briefly here. Ohm's law for electricity simply states that the voltage as measured in volts equals current as measured in amperes times resistance measured in a unit called ohms. This is usually abbreviated V equals IR. Here is a simple circuit. The battery, represented by four lines of alternating length, provides the voltage. The resistor is represented by a zigzag which interrupts the normal unimpeded current represented by I as it travels clockwise starting and ending at the battery. An extremely simple Ohm's law problem might give us the voltage of the battery, suppose it's 12 volts, and the value of the resistor could be 4 ohms, which is frequently represented by the Greek letter omega, and we could be asked to solve for the amount of current traveling through the circuit. So 12 volts equals current times 4 ohms, and the current is 3 amperes, usually shortened to amps. It's very straightforward. But how do we apply the same concept to fluids? In fluids, voltage, which is the difference in electrical potential in electricity and magnetism, is replaced by the difference in pressure between two points. Current, which is nothing more than the flow of charge, is replaced by fluid flow, and resistance is left as resistance. Let's take this one step further and apply it to hemodynamics. The first thing to realize in hemodynamics is that we don't have just one resistor, but rather many, many resistors in parallel. In a circuit, it would look like this, where current that reaches an intersection is distributed to the possible paths based on the relative magnitude of the various resistances. A path with a low resistance gets more current, and one with high resistance gets less current. Here is a simplified schematic of the body's equivalent of a circuit. The battery gets replaced by the heart. In reality, the heart is actually four separate pumps, one for each chamber, with the right and left sides separated by the resistance of the lungs. But this simplification will suffice for this demonstration. The pressure difference across the battery of the heart is the difference between the mean arterial pressure, which is the weighted average between systolic and diastolic pressure, and the central venous pressure. The fluid flow in the body is something called the cardiac output, which is the measure of how much blood the heart pumps each minute. For the resistors, each organ can be thought of as its own. For example, here I've shown the brain, kidney, and muscle, but there are obviously many, many more, and even how one divides the body into parallel resistors is kind of arbitrary. However, we don't usually need to worry about the individual resistors but rather we worry about the combined total resistance of all of them, which is called the systemic vascular resistance. So this gives us mean arterial pressure minus CVP equals cardiac output times systemic vascular resistance. In the absence of heart failure, MAP is usually much larger than CVP, so this simplifies to MAP is approximately equal to cardiac output times SVR, and this equation is undoubtedly one of the most important in all of medicine. The most fundamental concept it helps us to understand is the etiologies of hypotension, or low blood pressure. As we can see, if a patient is hypotensive, he or she must have either low cardiac output or low systemic vascular resistance. Low cardiac output can be a consequence of either hypovolemic shock, where there is not enough blood, or cardiogenic shock, where the primary functioning of the heart is poor. Low SVR is caused by something called distributive shock, where blood vessels pathologically dilate. This is most commonly seen in severe infection, where it is known as septic shock, as well as seen in anaphylaxis. Understanding into which of these categories the etiology of a patient's hypotension falls is critical in treatment. Hypovolemic shock requires blood or IV infusion of fluid. Cardiogenic shock requires medications to make the heart beat more strongly or mechanical devices which take over some of the heart's pumping function. Distributive shock requires medications which constrict the blood vessels to bring SVR back up to normal. 
There is one more point I'd like to make related to Ohm's law for hemodynamics. Imagine that for some reason the resistance to blood flow to a single organ is dramatically increased. In this case, something is causing extrinsic compression on the renal artery. Increasing resistance to a single organ can substantially decrease blood flow to that organ without having significant impact on the overall systemic vascular resistance and blood will simply be diverted through the many other organs. So that's really all there is to say about Ohm's law for hemodynamics. The next video will discuss the concept of resistance in more detail.